G'day you cheeky dogs, my name's Margie and I'm an Aussie currently living in America. Today's video is going to be Bluey Season 1, Episode 1, The Magic Xylophone, rehashed and re-released because I actually filmed this about six months ago. But now that I'm doing the whole of Season 1, 2 and 3 Easter eggs, I wanted to make sure that I got this one out to you guys and that I had it fully updated as well. So with that being said, let's go back in time and I hope you enjoy this video. <laughs> So this episode aired in October 2018 in Australia, which seems like literally forever ago, but it didn't actually hit the US, or the UK or other overseas audiences until a year later around October or September 2019. And something interesting to note as well is that this wasn't the first episode to hit overseas. It was actually the second. Keepy Uppy was the first episode that came to the US. Also, this episode is not the pilot episode either. It's not until a few episodes later that we get The Weekend, which is actually the pilot episode for Bluey. And you can sort of tell as well the animation. Now with the first few episodes of season one you can see a couple of little animation errors that we're going to be going through as well when we go through each different episode. There's some in this one as well as in a few others. By the time you see season three it's a lot slicker. The very first thing obviously that we see is the intro to Bluey. For those of you who don't know the intro is, is actually them playing a game, musical statues. So whoever doesn't stop and keeps dancing that's why they call out their name. First opening scene we get to see the healer house and again I'm going to try and just sort of do the generalized breakdown just in case anyone doesn't know any of sort of the basic stuffs here. Uh, starting with the location basically and the house. The house is a typical Queenslander which is found in Brisbane and all over Queensland which is where Bluey is. We can tell specifically what suburb or neighborhood that Bluey and her family live in based on some of the background stuff. So on one side we have St. Brigid's Church which is in Red Hill and then on the other side we see the mountain in the background with the transmitter on top. The mountain is Mount Kutha and that transmitter is a very famous one that's on the top of Mount Kutha. So again we can kind of tell that Bluey lives around Paddington Red Hill type area. Now as we open the scene we see Bingo and then it quickly changes frame and makes it look like Bandit is talking to us as the audience sort of breaking the fourth wall. We then get to hear Bandit speak for the first time ever and the voice actor is David McCormick who is also the front man for the band Custard. Him being a singer comes back into his character as Bandit a lot throughout the seasons and I'll be mentioning it again in just a little bit. He tells us also as the audience that he's about to play the Rondo alla Turca which is a song by Mozart. Bluey uses loads and loads of classical music and I love that in the very first episode basically the first thing we hear from them is referencing that classical music. In the background then as well we can see a bunch of different easter eggs so let's just quickly go through each of them. The first one is is our long dog that is there on the bench. The hand-drawn pictures in the back, we've got one of mountains and the sun, which we know is now the Glasshouse Mountains where Bluey goes to school. On the other side, we see a little map of Australia and you can see the outline of Queensland drawn into it. It's the only state drawn into it as well, which is quite funny, but that is the state that they live in. And then over on the other side, we can see a picture of a monkey, which we now know is Chunky Chip. And then we have our first error for this episode. So Bingo said, Dad, she's had this many turns and she does vocally say that, but whoever did the subtitles wrote he's. And this is actually a really common error, especially just as the audience. This has popped up a lot of times in a lot of Facebook threads and Reddit threads that I've seen that when people initially watched this show, they assumed that Bluey was a boy because Bingo looks like her mom, so girl, girl. Bluey looks like her dad, blue, boy, boy. So interesting that obviously the person who was also just doing the subtitles in Australia on ABC thought that Bluey was a boy too. We then get to see Chili entering the scene. It's our first time seeing her and I love that she enters dancing because that's such a big part of her character. Now the voice actor for Chili is Melanie Zanetti. She is a fantastic voice actor as well as an actress as well and a really interesting fact is that both her and David McCormack who voice Bandit have never met in real life. So an article came out that basically told everyone about this and it blew everything everyone's minds because their chemistry on the show is fantastic but they actually record all of their lines separately and then once it's put together is the first time they hear it. So kudos to both of them for being amazing voice actors and making us feel that chemistry even when they're not recording together. We then get our title card and there's also like some little interesting easter eggy facts about this. So this is the only one that actually is on two lines for the rest of the episodes they usually put it all on one line so the font gets moved down a little bit. Also usually they say what the episode is before they show the title card. In this one 
one though, it's the opposite way around. They show the title card first and then Bluey says the magic xylophone later on. Also Bluey says the magic xylophone, but the title card just says magic xylophone. So just a couple of like little, not so much errors, but just changes that happened. Now the girls freeze Bandit with the magic xylophone and they stick a finger up his nose. And it's a really funny game. We see Chili walking past, she's on her way to work and she makes the little comment of, oh look, it's just like when we first met, which we now know so much more about. From Chili's perspective, we know that she thinks they first met in London, but from Bandit's perspective, we know that he thinks that they first met when they were, what was it, 11 years old at a campsite. Now, as we go outside, something I just wanted to point out is the dog bone on the letterbox, just the detailing of bones throughout the whole house and the architecture. Like you see it through a lot of the windows and on a lot of the door frames and things like that. So I think this is a really cute way that the animators have decided to make it a real dog house by adding in a lot of bone decor everywhere. We then see a cameo from Chloe's mum as she just like quickly walks by. Something of interest though is that like Chloe's never brought up the fact that she has like a little baby brother or sister and we never see the little baby brother or sister really only ever in the pram. I always, I didn't know if this was actually Chloe's mum but it is credited that it is Chloe's mum on like Bluey wiki pages. Chili basically sets down the law saying you take turns or I'm taking it to work and I'll freeze my boss. Now something interesting about Chili and her job is it's never actually mentioned in the show what she does but on the Bluey official webpage it does actually state that she works for airport security. Now we see the girls bring out a bunch of stuffed toys. I'm gonna mention these again in a second so just keep those in mind. But when we go back inside we see the girls bedroom and in the corner we see a pedestal fan. Typical part of Aussie Queenslander lifestyle. It's hot. It's like really, really hot. Not all the rooms sometimes have ceiling fans. So these pedestal fans, they are the most like important part of your life when it hits summer. We then see the girls underneath their bed. There's a bunch of different toys underneath there. The main one I want to point out, of course, is the tennis ball Easter egg, which is in the bottom right corner. This comes up in almost every episode, more than the long dog, I would say. There's a few other little toys here as well. Just a typical stuff, a board game. Some believe that this is a like Easter egg or a reference to the game of life. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about about it. I don't think it really looks that similar, but if you have any ideas on what it could be, please let me know in the comments down below. Next to it though, we do have a yellow bus that kind of looks like a yellow cat bus, which could be a reference to the movie My Neighbor Totoro. There's a lot of Studio Ghibli references throughout Bluey, so I wouldn't be surprised if it is. As we go into the hallway, we see the bottom of the cupboard there. We see like a paper crown that you would see in Christmas, which does come up in season two. We have a little magic wand on the other corner there, which comes up in multiple episodes throughout the season. And then we have the red gnome hat, which I think also might be just a little bit of a reference towards Smurfs as well. We see Bandit up at the top and he jumps down yelling freedom, which is hands down a reference to the movie Braveheart and the scene there where they yell out freedom. And then he makes the comment, never mind, she'll keep. I bring this up because my husband who is American asked me about this. He's like, I've never really heard that saying as much before. It's not an Australian saying, but maybe it's more like a British one. So basically it's saying they're like, yeah, here you can leave bingo. It'll be fine. It's okay. He then takes Bluey outside and then quite purposefully leaves the xylophone next to her because he's aware that Bingo is just around the corner and that this way Bingo will be able to access the xylophone. Bandit is smart. He is a very smart father. You see this in multiple episodes where he guides the girls through the game basically so that they can learn the lesson of the game. And I think this is one of those parts where, yeah, he's purposefully left it right next to Bluey so that the girls are able to, yeah, learn the lesson. Now, before I go on to the actual lesson, one to point out, uh, where's the stuffed toys? There's none. So this is our second sort of error for the episode. It's an animation error. We then see Bandit coming back through doing a little jingle or a little song. He does this all the time. And I think, again, it's a perfect mix with his voice actor because his voice actor, David McCormack, is a singer in real life. So I love that that's always included in the show. We hilariously see the girls basically waterboard him with the hose. And then we just get like this background scene behind the house. This scene actually is very Australian. So the pebble trees in the background aren't just like a beautiful animation thing. The pebble trees do exist in Brisbane. They're jacaroo trees. They're really gorgeous, especially when they bloom, usually around like November time. We also have the wooden power poles, which are very typical for Queensland and Australia. We have the birds on the power lines. Look, this could be a reference to Pixar or just the fact that birds are always on power lines. Roll to the end credit scene and we see Bluey just dancing in the background. This of course changes further on during the season where we see something specific instead to the episode for the end credit scene. Overall for me, I definitely love Magic Xylophone. I love the theme of it that you know you have to learn 
how to share. And that is something that's really difficult for children to do as well as to express themselves, like how Bingo was able to express herself to Bluey about the things that she was having problems with. So overall, I'd probably give this 3.5 long dogs out of five. But let me know, what would you guys give this out of five long dogs in the comment section down below? Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as that bell for notifications. So you know whenever I'm releasing any other Bluey theories as well as Bluey breakdown videos from season one, I will be trying to get through all of season one before we get the last section of Bluey season 3C as well. But until then, I've picked out a few other videos that maybe you'd like to watch and I'll see you cheeky dogs in another video. Mwah! Bye!